Hi guys, so let's now take a look at the gross profit margin. Okay, so this measures gross profit as a percentage of revenue overall, okay? So it's simply calculated via gross profit margin equals your gross profit divided by your revenue times 100. It's a nice straightforward calculation to actually use. And as you can see, I've written out an example here where we've got 45,000 pounds of gross profit. We've got 100,000 pounds of revenue into the business. Uh, we can multiply this by 100 and we can then see that that would equate to a 45% uh, gross profit margin. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that for every pound of income, every pound of sales or sales revenue that's actually generated, then the business actually retains 45p as gross profit. So that is our gross profit on every pound of revenue in essence, okay? So just think about what this really helps us to understand. Gross profit equals revenue minus the cost of sales, okay? That is your direct costs from buying raw materials and stock into the business. Okay, so we've got 45% as an outcome here. What does that mean is actually being spent on our cost of sales? Well, clearly, it's the remainder of that pound. So it's 55p out of every pound is going to pay your uh, suppliers in direct costs there, okay? Um, so we've got a, uh, a cost of sales effectively running at 55%. Our gross profit margin is 45%. But in the last period, this business actually maintained a uh, gross profit margin of 50%. So what does that tell us? Well, quite clearly, it tells us that the gross profit is lower uh, in relation to the actual uh, money coming into the business uh, than it was in the previous period. And the cost of sales is clearly therefore higher because that is the big difference here, okay? Um, so if the business is running 45% now, it was 50%, what can it do about it in the future period coming up, okay? Well, let's have a look at what we've got here. Two main points to focus on. Firstly, you could reduce the cost of sales, okay? So you could reduce the cost of sales by buying in bulk, that may enable you to get a better price for the products, okay? Uh, or you could go to the supplier and actually nego negotiate a lower price with your supplier. Alternatively, you could change suppliers and maybe even find a, uh, a lower price supplier. But of course, you don't want to substitute quality there, okay? So that's an important consideration to make. Uh, or our second method here, you could increase the sales price. So if this cost of sales is actually increased because of rising inflation, i.e. The, uh, the actual uh, stock that you're buying is more expensive than it was in the last period, then uh, you may be able to get away with increasing the price, particularly if the demand for your product is high or if your product has certain unique characteristics and doesn't have direct substitutes. Okay, for A-level students, of course, you'd then want to bring in price elasticity of demand and the relative elasticity of the product, okay? Uh, but this is a slightly more risky strategy generally, okay? Uh, so it's worth bearing in mind, simply, of course, increasing your sales overall will not actually change that margin uh, because you'll still be paying the same price for your cost of sales, okay? Uh, interesting stuff. Thanks for joining.